Hi everyone, in this video I'll continue assembling Cybertruck, specifically I'm going to work on independent air suspension. It's time for it to get rid of the building berth and get on the wheels. Now I'll show you what spare parts we'll need for this. I bought four steering knuckles from Chevrolet Neva Assemblage at Breaker's Yard. They bear a large load and their brakes are three plunger all of a piece. I took 16 inches stamps for tires which I bought earlier. Also initially we'll need two gearings from Chevrolet. I'll need only external CV joints from them, the internal ones will be welded according to a specific reduction gear. I bought another box of spare parts for different needs. I chose silent blocks for levers of such type as there are eight sets of them available at once. From the whole beginning I took the reinforced door hinges which I'd use later, 16mm bolts which will be used for springs fastening, box bolts which I think will be useful for a body door, it'll be convenient to screw a servo motor to them. And of course the most important thing is airbags, the easiest and most reliable variant. One airbag can withstand a load of 2 tons. To calculate the air suspension, you should first check the stroke of the air bellow. It appeared to be 19 centimeters and through the lever the wheel stroke can be made one and a half times larger. To control the airbags I'll use two flow system working from 12 volts. The first thing I'd like to make is to try on the disc with the steering knuckle in its place. There can appear some problems because of the too much bulging ball joint. The disc seems to look too small in such arch, but this will be improved by high tires which are quite plenty on sale nowadays. And here's a problem the upper ball joint hits the frame while lowering the air suspension. There are several ways to fix this. We can shorten the ball joint fastening which will allow loosening this unit or inserting the ball joint backwards boring the hole at first. I think I won't resort any such radical measures that will entail weakening of the unit strength. Meanwhile, I'll leave everything as it is and after the levers will be ready I'll return to this question. Choosing between the frame and the subframe I stopped my choice on the subframes. Before its production I'll make a spacer from the square pipe to lower the subframe and give more upper movement to the levers. The building berth will interfere with further work so I'll have to cut off a part of it. There'll be a nice base for the subframe from the cut pipes of the building berth. I assembled the subframe in place and welded it to the frame. I'll make lugs for levers from the channel, it precisely contains metal of required thickness. I loosed it, marked it along into equal sections, and drilled some holes in each one for 16mm bolts. Then I assembled a unit for the silent block. I ground the bushings out of pipe and hammered in the silent blocks on each side. I'll need this detail in order to weld the lugs to the subframe. But to weld the bushing to the levers we need to replace the rubber silent blocks with aluminum spacers as during the welding the rubber will simply burn up. I'll bend the pipes for levers on the homemade pipe bender. You can find the manufacturing instructions on my live channel. The most important thing about the levers is that the airbag should stay freely inside and couldn't hit the pipes. For the ball joint I made a simple detail from two strips. Finally we got such a batarang which can also be used for its intended purpose. It will be welded into slots at the ends of the pipe which I made with a grinder. After that I welded the ready part in place to the bushings.
Now we can remove the lever and calmly make some welding on the table, and also hammer silent blocks into it. To strengthen the lever, I welded another pipe element at the end. The same way I made the lower lever. In order to weld the bushings to it we need to try on the wheel in place. Therefore it must be assembled. There will be used an inner tire as the tire itself is quite old and has many holes after the wrong studding. Later I'll buy normal tubeless tire for the size of the Cybertruck arch. I fixed the steering knuckle in the disc and put levers into it. I fixed the upper lever in its place and will weld the lower one only after defining the wheel vertical and plumb. After the fitting I welded the lower lever and pressed the silent blocks. Before the lever's installation I welded the subframe and added several elements to it. Due to the location of the ball joints on the knuckle the levers turned out to have the right length. You can put the steering gearbox on the rear suspension and the rear axle will also be able to steer, but most likely I'll make one adjustable lever to adjust the wheel's toe in. I also made two levers on the right side and installed them in their place. Most likely the subframe will be integrated as there is no need to remove it, and it will also be difficult to make without a lift. Now we came back to the problem with an upper ball joint. It abuts on the pipe and don't let the body to go lower. For now this is the lowest position. I decided to cut a place for the upper lever in the frame. For this purpose, I welded another pair of transverse elements and cut off the interfering pipe. Now nothing disturbs the lever and the body will lower as it should. It's time to make the air bellows fastening. I have another amount of channel, so I'll make these fasteners from it. I placed the airbag in order it couldn't touch the lever, and to achieve the maximum suspension ride. Now we need to make the lower fastening of the airbag to the lever. I also took a piece of channel and branches that I bent on the pipe bender. We got such complex levers similar to the exhaust system manifold. The channel was used on purpose as the wheel drive will pass in it. All welding works are coming to the end. We only have to connect the air suspension to the compressed air. I screwed the fitting into each bellow. They are needed for the air pressure line. I took the 8mm pipe for it. As we use a double circuit suspension I connected two airbags with a T-joint. I connected a plastic tube for checking to the compressor, and opened a reducer for 6 atmospheres. To make a check we need to cut the supports on the building berth. So this is the highest position of the body. I tried to jump on the body and check whether it is possible to ride on such a fully raised suspension, and if there is any reserve in the distance endurance of the ball joints. A small reserve presence, it means the height is limited by the stroke of the air bellow. And now probably the most interesting question is how much can you lower a Tesla body using this air suspension? It lowers quite much, I even think there is no need for the ramps to lift Cyberquad. The rubber limiters must be screwed to the subframe in order the lever cannot lie on the frame or on the airbag either. 
If you follow the news you've probably heard that Tesla wants to increase the pneumatic suspension stroke and make the Cybertruck even higher. I think I've done it already, the body rises very high, I checked the middle position of the suspension and how it reacted to artificially created irregularities. I couldn't even imagine the air bellows looked so alike the springs. A stroke turned out to be very smooth and soft, now there's only left to add the shock absorbers. I am super pleased to finally manage to work with the air suspension. Can't wait to test it in real conditions. If you also like this work put your thumbs up and share with this video. It helps a lot in promoting such difficult techno content like this. Thanks everyone in advance. See you in the next part where Tesla will completely get on its air suspension.